It was June 18, 2023, a day that would forever be etched in the annals of deep-sea exploration. On this fateful day, something extraordinary and unsettling unfolded in the mysterious depths of the ocean. The world stood witness to a tragic and unexpected event that would cast a spotlight on the boundaries and controversies surrounding our quest to unravel the secrets of the deep. What really happened? And why did it happen? A group of five individuals embarked on an extraordinary adventure, stepping into the Titan submersible. Their eyes reflected a shared spark of audacious curiosity. Leading the expedition was Stockton Rush, a 61-year-old Maverick pilot who also served as the founder and CEO of Ocean Gate Expeditions. With roots in the aerospace industry, Stockton, distinguished by his silver hair, possessed a well-known passion for exploring the uncharted depths of the sea and inventing innovative submersibles. Ocean Gate, born in 2009 as Stockton's brainchild, came into existence with a vision that reached fruition in 2021 when they began offering titanic expeditions to thrill-seeking adventurers. The company had successfully raised nearly $37 million in funding, including a recent investment of $18 million specifically to launch the Titanic expeditions. Stockton, known for his adventurous spirit and willingness to take risks, was not one to be daunted by challenges. In a 2022 interview, he boldly expressed, if you just want to be safe, don't do anything. At some point, you have to take some risk. He even questioned the conventional notion of safety, considering it a pure waste. This audacity earned him the title of a daredevil inventor in a 2009 Smithsonian Magazine article. In the same piece, he criticized the U.S. Passenger Vessel Safety Act of 1993 for hindering commercial innovation by excessively prioritizing passenger safety. Accompanying Stockton on this remarkable journey was Hamish Harding, a 58-year-old British billionaire known for his insatiable thirst for extreme adventures. Harding, a globetrotter who adventured to the South Pole with Buzz Aldrin and held three Guinness World Records, including a four-hour drive to the Mariana Trench's abyss, was an embodiment of a force of nature. He had also joined the crew of Blue Origin's suborbital flight, along with esteemed individuals like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Harrison Ford, earning his place in the living legends of aviation. Another occupant of the Titan was Paul-Henri Narjolet, a 77-year-old former French Navy commander and a renowned expert in deep-sea exploration. With 35 dives to the Titanic wreck and serving as the director of underwater research at RMS Titanic Incorporated, Narjolet held authority over the infamous shipwreck. He had also been part of the team that located the missing Air France Flight 447 over the Atlantic. Completing this illustrious crew were Shahzada Dawood, a 48-year-old Pakistani-British entrepreneur and philanthropist, and his teenage son, Suleiman Dawood. Shahzada led the colossal and growing corporation back home and served on the board of his family's foundation as well as the SETI Institute, renowned for its search for extraterrestrial life. These five individuals aboard the Titan shared a profound connection through their interests in deep sea, air, and space exploration. Their notable achievements in their respective fields, combined with their financial capabilities, propelled them to pursue their passions. While Ocean Gate's Titanic expeditions carried a hefty price tag of up to $250,000 per person, the company's mission extended beyond deep sea tourism. Their aspirations revolved around advancing research on the wreck and its surrounding debris, uncovering the mysteries that the deep sea holds. The Titanic wreck site itself is treacherous and unpredictable, as expressed by Dick Barton, the first British man to dive the Titanic. In his conversation with Good Morning Britain, Barton emphasized the consistent ebb and flow of water currents and the immense power required to stay on course during the exploration of this historic site. When deep beneath the ocean's surface, remaining inconspicuous becomes crucial. Power conservation holds utmost importance as it becomes your lifeline and guiding light. In critical situations or calamities, forcing the crew to evacuate the pod on the seafloor, Simon Boxel, a renowned oceanography expert, painted a somber picture. The extraordinary pressure at a depth of 3,800 meters is a menacing trap. Escape attempts at such depths last for a fraction of a second. Consequently, 
Rescuing the submersible and its occupants necessitates raising the vessel back to the surface. Operating in international waters, the Titan remained free from safety regulations and lacked seaworthiness certification from any authority. David Pogue, a reporter who embarked on the expedition in 2022, revealed that passengers boarding the Titan were required to sign a waiver. This waiver acknowledged that they were entering an experimental vessel without any approval or certification from regulatory bodies and thus faced potential risks of physical harm, disability, emotional distress, or even death. The waiver ominously mentioned the word death three times on its first page. Mike Reese, a TV producer and another participant in the expedition, noted the disconcerting repetition of the word death. The Titan had undertaken three expeditions to the Titanic wreck site, with the first one occurring in July 2021. During Pogue's dive in 2022, communication was unexpectedly lost, leading him to question the safety of the Titan. In his report, Pogue commented on Stockton's inventive mind, mentioning that the submersible seemed to have elements of MacGyver-like improvisation. Stockton had ingeniously used a video game controller to operate the Titan, which left many people unsure whether it was a serious implementation or a jest. Pogue noticed that a Logitech Bluetooth game controller was used to steer and pitch the submersible, while construction pipes were utilized as ballast. Furthermore, during that particular dive, one of the Titan's thrusters was mistakenly installed backward, causing the submersible to spin in circles when attempting to move forward near the seafloor. As reported in a BBC documentary titled Take Me to the Titanic, this issue was addressed by holding the game controller sideways and using a steering wheel as a workaround. The petite and teardrop-shaped Titan, measuring 22 feet long, lacked the capabilities of a naval submarine. Its interior resembled the size of a minivan, devoid of seats, but equipped with a small toilet and a solitary porthole window. This design made it unsuitable for prolonged underwater stays or unassisted port arrivals, requiring constant vessel support. During the Titan experience, passengers were handed sandwiches and water for the 10-hour journey, with only a mere 20 minutes allotted to witness the Titanic wreckage. Throughout the dive, the submarine maintained regular communication with the support ship, following the scheduled 15-minute intervals. However, at 11.15 a.m., contact was abruptly lost, plunging the crew aboard the Polar Prince into a state of anxious anticipation. As the hours passed and the scheduled return time of 4.30 p.m. approached, anxiety transformed into dread when the submarine failed to resurface. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the team aboard the Polar Prince took decisive action and contacted the U.S. Coast Guard at 7.10 p.m., initiating a multinational search and rescue operation. Time became a critical factor as the limited oxygen supply within the submersible dwindled, with only four days' worth of oxygen available. Spanning an area of 25,000 square kilometers, the search for the submarine resembled a proverbial needle in a haystack scenario. The sheer scale of the operation was daunting, with the search area larger than the entire state of West Virginia in the United States. Adding to the challenge was the fact that previous underwater rescue operations had only reached depths of 480 meters, making the search for the Titan submersible an unprecedented feat. Nevertheless, against all odds, rescue teams risked their lives, deploying aircraft, ships, and remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, in their quest. The ROVs in particular proved invaluable as they meticulously combed through the abyss of the ocean floor, searching for any sign of the lost submersible. Days turned into an anxious wait, with hope mingling with desperation. Then, on the third day of the search, a Canadian aircraft sonar detected peculiar banging noises deep beneath the surface. The U.S. Coast Guard later confirmed hearing the same haunting sounds. Finally, on June 22, an ROV investigating the ocean floor stumbled upon debris located approximately 490 meters from the bow of the Titanic wreck. Further examination revealed the tragic truth. The submersible had disintegrated, claiming the lives of those on board. A total of five debris pieces were discovered, leaving no room for doubt. In a devastating press conference, the U.S. Coast Guard officially announced the heart-wrenching news. The carbon fiber used in Titan's construction proved insufficient for such extreme conditions. This implosion marked an unprecedented event, 
underscoring the importance of adhering to safety standards and regulations. Even Robert Ballard, the renowned ocean explorer who discovered the Titanic wreckage in 1985, confirmed that his team had conducted numerous dives without ever losing a vehicle. The submarine was specifically designed to endure the immense pressure at those depths, and experts will now conduct a thorough investigation to ascertain the cause of the incident. Analyzing the debris recovered from the site may provide valuable insights in this regard. When contact was lost, Titan is estimated to have been positioned approximately 3,500 meters below sea level. At such a profound depth, the volume of water surrounding the vessel would have amounted to the weight of the Eiffel Tower, consisting of tens of thousands of tons. In the event of a structural rupture, the external pressure on the hull would far exceed the internal pressure, resulting in the compression of the vessel. This immense pressure differential can have severe consequences for the integrity of the submarine. When a submarine hull undergoes collapse, it experiences an inward movement at an astonishing speed of approximately 1,500 miles per hour, 2,414 kilometers per hour, or 2,200 feet per second, 671 meters per second, as explained by Dave Corley, a former U.S. nuclear submarine officer. The process of complete collapse happens within an incredibly short time frame of around one millisecond, which is equivalent to one thousandth of a second. In comparison, the human brain instinctively responds to a stimulus in approximately 25 milliseconds. It is believed that the rational response time for humans, from sensing to taking action, is at best around 150 milliseconds. It is important to note that the air inside a submarine contains a relatively high concentration of hydrocarbon vapors. When the hull collapses, the air within the submarine undergoes auto-ignition resulting in a subsequent explosion following the rapid initial implosion, as explained by Mr. Corley. Due to the intense heat generated, human bodies are incinerated almost instantly, transforming into ash and dust. However, it is highly unlikely that the authorities will permit Ocean Gate to undertake another trip without proper approvals. Following the tragic implosion of the Titan submersible, Ocean Gate, the company operating the vessel, announced the suspension of all its exploration and commercial operations. The announcement was made through a brief statement posted on the company's website, though no further details regarding the suspension were provided. While the company's website still displayed a photo of the Titanic wreck with the tagline, Explore the world's most famous shipwreck, it was no longer possible to book a trip, and certain features of the site were not functioning. Legal experts anticipate that family members of the deceased will file lawsuits not only against Ocean Gate, but also against the manufacturer of the Titan and companies that supplied its parts. However, if Ocean Gate completely shuts down, it may limit their options for seeking damages. Nevertheless, an important question remains unanswered. Should Ocean Gate be allowed to continue its deep sea exploration expeditions following the tragic incident involving the Titan submersible? We value your thoughts and invite you to share them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe for more videos.